Hello everyone and welcome to Beer Club episode 6 and in this episode I'm going to be giving an update on the making of our pub shed. As you can see there's been quite a lot of uh, changes that's been made since the last episode and we'll also be opening this month's Beer 52 box. But first, an important announcement. To speak, I can tell the house that we will also reopen restaurants and pubs. So yes, it looks like pubs and clubs are going to start reopening this weekend as the lockdown from the coronavirus has started to ease off more and more. And it's just in time for the opening of our own pub. Now last month we'd only been putting the flags down, but as you can see we've made quite a lot of progress uh, since then. Now this is a clubby cabin from Tuin, uh, and we found that when the cabin arrived, actually building it was surprisingly easy. Uh, myself and my wife and our two oldest teenage sons all sort of got involved and built it together, which was a, a really nice thing to do as a family. Hello there. Welcome to the Mabba's Tavern. <laughs> uh, yes, it's a topless bar at the moment. <laughs> um, at the moment, we've got a waterproof cover on the roof of the cabin, which has, oh, yeah. which has uh, prevented any water from getting in. Uh, but we'll be finishing this off soon with some insulation and some shingles on top. Hopefully by the time I get to the next episode, we'll, uh, we'll have that in place. Uh, I should point out as well that neither of us are experts when it comes to DIY. Uh, so putting up a, a shelf or an IKEA flat pack is about as far as what our DIY skills go. Uh, although one of my boys has actually made this uh, this fantastic uh, seating area uh, right here, which is made from some of the leftover bits of wood and some uh, and some padding. So uh, yeah, that's it's fantastic. This has been like his own little project and. Uh, is he's, he's done a fantastic job but this has really sort of become like a a family project this whole this whole pub shed thing which has been absolutely lovely um the floor is down with insulation underneath it the bar that we bought last month has had a lick of paint and has been put into the pub itself into the cabin uh we've also bought a mini fridge for the bar as well now at the moment we haven't got the electricity in yet although this hasn't stopped us from putting some uh, some lights in yes very jazzy, I'm sure you'll agree. Uh, we've put up shells, optics, and we've added a few decorations as well, including this signed poster that I was sent from Rocky Flintstone, the writer of uh, the Belinda Blinked um, books, as covered in the podcast My Dad Wrote a Porno. And uh, that's certainly got quite a bit of attention on, uh, on Twitter. Anyway, uh, this is still a work in progress, and I've no doubt we'll have even more to show you next month in the next episode. So until then, let's get on with cracking up in this month's Beer 52 box. Um, and this month we're going to be meeting the breweries that are changing the world one pint at a time. So we kick things off with the bar snap that we get. Um, this month we've got Love Corn um, again. We seem to keep alternating between either getting Love Corn or the Brave Roasted Chickpeas in our monthly boxes. Uh, in fact, I think we had love corn in last month's box as well uh, we certainly had it in the very first one although i've enjoyed both of these snacks it's getting to the point where i would like to see a little bit more variety in the bar snacks that beer 52 have in their boxes going forwards just a, a slight uh, criticism there if i may so let's go on to the beers first of all from the five points brewing company we've got a railway porter this is a classic london style porter with aromas of chocolate and coffee uh, with hints of caramel. This carries over into the taste as well and leaves a nice creamy aftertaste. Um, another top-notch beer from Five Points. Big thumbs up to those guys. Next up from the Queer Brewing Project we have Take Up Space. This is fresh raspberry notes over a touch of vanilla which results in a beer that would go really well on a, on a spring evening, um, particularly if you're having it with a dessert. <laughs> Or, or just with a dessert. Um, as good as this is, and I did enjoy it, there is actually another raspberry based beer in this month's box, which I think was even better, but we'll come on to that in a moment. Next up from the Monda Brewing Company, it's Dennis Hopper. 
Uh, this is from the Battersea based Mondo Brewing Company in London and this tribute to the multi-talented actor, filmmaker, photographer and artist contains lots of grapefruit and passion fruit on both the aroma and the flavour with a bit of finish. Um, a great session IPA with a lot of hops all complementing each other very, very well. Uh, the Yeasty Boys make a much welcomed return to B52 with their utopian dream sequence. Uh, this is an American brown ale with a sweet malty aroma with hints of chocolate and a smoky taste that has uh, roasted malts, chocolate and cocoa. Um, apparently there's meant to be orange in this as well but I couldn't actually taste any of the orange that was supposed to be in there. Still this is another winner from the New Zealand based brewery, sweet and refreshing with an aftertaste of berries and chocolate. Hope to see some more of these boys in future boxes. Next up we have the Mikella APS Hallo Ich Bin Berliner. Uh, Mikella are a brewery based in Denmark that love to show off some unique looks and tastes for their beers. Uh, their Hallo Ich Bin Berliner comes out as a pinkish reddish colour with a thick white head. Qu quite a striking appearance, it looks more like a dessert than a beer. As expected from the name, the taste contains lots of sweet raspberry and is very, very tarty, but full of tartness is this, with a slight sweetness that carries over into the aftertaste. Um, this was light and refreshing and it was an absolute pleasure to drink. Next up from the Four Pure Brewing Company we have Last Train. This is an oatmeal stout that has aromas of coffee, fruitcake and treacle which leads on to flavours of caramel, toffee and cocoa, with a, a lovely smooth finish. Uh, very drinkable and refreshing, and a little lighter compared to a lot of other stouts. Uh, I've been getting a real appreciation uh, for stouts, thanks to the fact that the beer is featured in B52, and this has been another one that I would definitely go for again. Okay, so we have a number of beers in this box from a brewery called People Like Us. Uh, this is another brewery based in Denmark and here we've got a number of their very unique beers featured here. The first one up is Oats of Obedience. This is a smooth oatmeal stout with notes of chocolate, dark roasted coffee and a nice burnt kick to it. Uh, it's a little thin compared to other stouts I've had from other Beer 52 boxes but this was still a great stout to enjoy. Uh, next up we have Tiny Rebel and Quitch, I think I'm pronouncing that one right. Uh, I'm just happy to see Tiny Rebel back in this month's box. I've become a big fan of theirs since their first appearance in Beer 52, and I've even bought a number of their beers from my uh, Perfect Draft Machine, which you saw me review in the last episode. Uh, Quitch is a Welsh red ale that has a striking colour when it's poured. It's a very sweet smelling beer with lots of pineapple, passion fruit and lychee. Uh, upon tasting it, it's quite dry and sour at the start, with sort of more sort of fruitiness in the in the middle, before going back to being dry and sour for the aftertaste. Um, very drinkable, goes down an absolute treat. It's another great beer from the people at Tiny Rebel. Okay, next up from the Wild Card Brewery, we have the Unite Tribute IPA. This is a hazy, juicy IPA, hopped with citra and Simcoe hops with. Uh, plenty of mango, pineapple and grapefruit on both the aroma and the flavour. Very, very nice and I also do really like the design of the can as well. Uh, next up we have Choo Choo. This is a salted caramel milk stout from the Scotland based brewery Fallen Brewing Company. Uh, both the aromas and the flavours are dominated by caramel, fudge and chocolates with a touch of licorice but not really any of the hint of the sea salt that was uh, advertised. I expected to get some of that, but no, no it wasn't really detecting any of that. Despite that, still a, a, a very smooth and a highly drinkable stout. Another winner uh, in this month's box. Had a lot of really, really good stouts here this month. Next up, uh, from people like us, it's a, the Pepper Spray IPA. So yeah, it's an IPA with black pepper in it. Which is interesting to say the least. Um, having said that, I couldn't detect that much pepper in here. Um, I was expecting something in the aroma and something within the taste, but I wasn't really sort of getting anything with that. 
Uh, however, there was still plenty of like citrus and tropical fruits in there. Uh, it was a good IPA with a decent amount of hoppiness. Just a little disappointed that there wasn't any uh, any spice in there, like uh, like what the, the can suggests. And the last beer, and this is the last one from people like us, is Tea Party. This is a uh, green jasmine tea uh, that adds a smooth herbal bitterness that goes together with the cream ale. Actually goes together much better than what I thought it would. Um, rather surprising this one. Uh, it went very well with the hops and it was very refreshing. I think that was, this one was probably my favourite out of all the beers from uh, people like us. And then finally we have this month's Ferment magazine which contains lots of interesting articles on the various different breweries featured in this month's box. A lot of them all doing uh, a lot for the uh, for the um, for the gay community. Uh, a lot of them doing uh, doing a lot of things uh, to raise like awareness uh, to various different uh, different charities and what have you. Um, all trying to sort of make the world a better place one point at a time, um, which you certainly can't fault. Um, I do think I mean there were a few beers that were advertised in the magazine that we didn't get here. Like a lot of the drinks, a lot of the beers that were in this box weren't featured in the magazine. And I'm just wondering if this is another case where, because of what's been going on recently with, uh, with COVID-19, whether they had to make a few sort of substitutes. Uh, I mean, when those substitutes result in getting more beers from the likes of Tiny Rebel, uh, Five Points Brewing Company, and, um, and the Yeasty Boys, then yeah, I've, I've got no complaints here. Um, so, looking on the back cover, it looks like the theme next month is going to be Sunshine Beers. So let's hope that we get suitably hot weather uh, in order to enjoy these beers in. So in conclusion, if you are going to be heading out to the pub uh, this weekend, then please bear in mind that some places might have certain rules uh, that you'll need to follow for everyone's safety. It's probably not going to be the same atmosphere that we'll be used to at first, but this is definitely a step in the right direction of getting things back to normal. So please respect the bar staff as this is likely going to be as much a difficult time for them as it, as it will be for yourself. Um, follow the rules, enjoy yourself and take care. Until next time, uh, this is Beer Club signing out and we'll see you again next month. Bye.